All right, let's go. Uh, if you guys have never seen me before, I'm Coin Ring Maker. I make coins into rings. And today we have two quarters we're going to be working on. We got a Wisconsin quarter and a 1994 quarter. I'm going to start with this Wisconsin one. And we're going to start right off by punching a hole in it. Let's go. We're just going to hammer this half inch punch straight through the quarter. Just like that. There's our Wisconsin center punch. Got a nice cow, a little corn leaf, and some cheese. Score. And there's our quarter. Now, after punching a hole in a coin, the inside edge right here is actually pretty sharp. So I like to cut away at it with a deburring tool. That makes it a little smoother, a little more comfortable, and less likely to snap as I start bending and shaping it. So I'll go ahead and tap the screen while we get this cleaned up, and uh, we'll finish making this into a ring. If you guys have not visited my website yet, cornringmaker.com, I'd like to invite you to go check it out. You can use the coupon code WELCOME to save 10%. I've got all different kinds of coins that make into rings, quarters, half dollars, dollars, even some dimes, and uh, some silver coins or rounds as well with some pretty neat designs. So if you want to go check that out, the link is on my profile. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Canadian pennies? I actually have uh, a couple of those. Let me, let me show you what I've got for those. So they aren't the average Canadian penny you would see with the, uh, the maple leaf. These are all over a hundred years old. They've got this really cool vine design all the way around. They make very, very pretty rings. Unfortunately, I don't have one on hand to show you, but you can see pictures of it on my website. These will be under uh, copper. They're, they're really cool. Anything from 1985. I've got uh, 1985 Washington quarters, uh, similar to. Let me see here. But they're going to be copper clad, so I do want to let you know that they can turn your finger green. But I do have a 1985 with the same penny, dude. It's a winner. It's a really nice design. I like that one a bunch. I wish they'd do like a recreation of it in silver. That would be super cool. So yeah, for the, the 70s and 80s, it's really tricky to get anything 90% uh, silver or fine silver. Most of it's going to be copper clad. Might be about time for a new blade on this. It looks like it's it's getting a little dull on me. Sound like Dennis Quaid. I mean my coin ring machine from an old 1900 buffalo drill press Ooh, nice dampening blocks and mandrels mandrels the way to go or at least that's how i started out 
mandrel and a hammer. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and change the blade on this. Could send you a 1984 silver dollar that was made. Have it made into a ring. Uh, if that's an American Eagle, those are 300. Let me double check and see if I have any from 84. I know I've got this one from 89. So it would be 300. Uh, you can email me at coin ring or info. It's info at coinringmaker.com and that's how I handle most of my custom orders. If you'd like, I could get a, uh, a 1984 silver dollar for you or I can work on yours. It doesn't look like I have one on hand. I do have some 2022s though. half cent. I don't have a half cent, but I do have something even a little cooler. I've got a Thrine. A three cent penny. It's my favorite coin. It's pretty cool. All right, so now we got our blade changed out on this. It should cut a lot easier now. Over time, these deburring blades just kind of dole out. What do you mean you found it? Where did you find it? Like in circulation or in your grandpa's coin collection? Like <laughs> so there we go. We got our inside edge nice and cleaned up. Now we're going to go over here and start folding it. For anyone who's just joined in, we're making this Wisconsin quarter into a ring for one of my customers. Ooh, backseat of your car. Score. That's pretty cool. So this is called a doming block, and we've got a ball bearing on top here. So it's worth something, at least half a cent. Um, honestly, I don't know. Uh, the value of coins often depends on the condition of the coin. And I, I'm not a great appraiser of coins without like actually looking at them. Uh, so that's that's tricky to say. But you could take it to someone who might know. No, it's not illegal. Uh, it's very similar to penny smashing machines that you might find at an amusement park, theme park, water park, museum, national park. As long as you don't fraudulently alter the currency, it's not breaking the law. If you do it for art, you're, you're all good. Uh, thousands. Honestly, thousands of times. I have uh, been asked that question so many times. I actually went out and talked to a lawyer about it. And we both... Uh, worked on a blog post that dives deep into the law. So you can find that at cornerringmaker.com, right at the top of the page. Uh, actually, a lawyer answering that question. If you're interested. <laughs> it's a nice little read. So 
next. What I'm doing right now is I'm sanding this cut edge. You really want to pay a lot of attention to the cut edge. If there's any cuts or dings in it, as we start stretching this out, the chances of it splitting on me go up quite a bit if I don't keep it nice and smooth. We're just going to sand that down. If anybody else has any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, if you haven't yet, go check out my website. It's linked on my profile. You can also get there by going to coinringmaker.com. Lots of cool coins. Yes, I do have a Susan B. Anthony. I actually think they come out really neat. I mean, this one has been sitting for a little bit, so I could definitely use a little bit of a polish, but it's got stars all the way around it. And this kind of curtain-looking rim, which I haven't seen on any other coins, which is pretty cool. Pretty prominent date. In God We Trust right there. And Liberty across the top. It's pretty cool. Is it one dollar right there? Yeah, I really like these. They, they're good looking. I finally got some delamination on the Morgan. Have I ever come across that? Not really. Um, most of my Morgans are almost coal. So they don't, they don't have anything uh, weird or fancy like that. They they just been sitting in the open air. Uh, what's your ring size, Brian? Eighteen eighty eight Morgan. I'm actually wearing a a Morgan right now. Mine's at eighteen ninety. Really like the Morgans. Eleven and a half, absolutely. Yeah, the biggest I can do quarters is a size 13. If you guys need something bigger than that, I can do half dollars, dollars, American Eagles. Um, I haven't done a one ounce gold coin, but I have done a quarter ounce gold coin. And it came out really nice. All right, guys, y'all tap the screen. We're gonna do some stretching here on the ring stretcher. Yeah, I really like it. So while I'm stretching, I'm not going to be, yes, I'm the quartermaster. I'm not gonna be able to see uh, comments. So give me just a second while we stretch this out. We're gonna need to get it to about a size 11. Because this ring is gonna be a size 10. So I like to go one size over, just so I have a little bit of wiggle room to reshape it. so that the pressure from the ring stretcher is never on the same spot of the ring. That way we can get it to stretch nice and evenly. We don't get any thin spots on the band. We should be getting pretty close to what I'm looking for. Yeah, we got that all the way up to a size 12, so that's just fine. All right. I've got uh, some rings that are even wider than this. My one ounce fine silver rounds, let me grab one for you, are super thick. So here's an example of a, uh, a Britannia. This one's from 2001 and it's just chocked full of detail. I really, really like this ring, but I have quite a few one ounce fine silver rounds as well as half ounce and quarter ounce so you're not stuck with just currency you can get uh, some fine silver really nice designs this thing is chunky though it's got some weight to it aren't you ruining the inside detail of the ring like that uh, with copper it's actually a lot tougher than silver so I don't have to do as much to protect it see we've still got really nice detail on the inside here if it was fine silver, I would definitely use a blue paper towel on the inside to help keep that inside detail. See how much crisper that is? It's just softer. So different metals, you gotta do different stuff. Let's see if I missed anything else. Freaking awesome, no problem. Uh, if it was 90% silver or fine silver, I would have heated it up. 
would have annealed it, but since this is just copper, this is the uh, the coin I pretty much specialized in when I first started is a copper clad quarter. I made about a thousand of these things. So I've just become really comfortable with knowing uh, what their breaking point is. Yeah, I can do a size six. I can, I can feel when the metal's getting weird and when I need to heat it up. So here we're reducing it back down. We're trying to get it to a size 10. And also uh, even out the shape of the ring. See how it's starting to get more of a straight wall look? Stylistically, I think that looks really nice. So that's what I go for. I can't do a two ounce. Uh, my friend Christopher Navarro has done them before, but you have to saw them in half and it just doesn't look like a lot of fun. One day I'll probably give it a whirl, but uh, currently I stop at one ounce. Two ounces just, it's, it's a lot. We got this one just over a size 10. Just need a little bit more reduction on it. It's very close. If anybody else has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I do appreciate y'all joining me as I work here. It's always nice to have an audience. There we go, we've got size 10 on the dot. So this is a copper clad quarter. I charge $20 for these, but I also have 90% silver quarters uh, from 1992 and up, as well as all the state quarters. So uh, if you're worried about the copper turning your finger green, I do recommend getting the 90% silver. If you're the type of person who doesn't mind copper jewelry or your finger turning green, uh, this is a good, uh, cheaper option. What kind of the camera setup do I use? This is just a, the newest iPhone. Whatever it's called. iPhone 15 or something like that. Now we're just going to clean up that cut edge there. Make it nice and smooth. Uh, one ounce silver rounds are 300. Uh, Morgan dollars like this are 200. Uh, half dollars are 150 and 90% silver quarters are 100. You can see all my prices on my website, which is linked in my profile, or you can just go to coinringmaker.com. If you'd like to take a, a screenshot, there's my website right there. And you guys can actually use the coupon code WELCOME, it'll save you 10% off your order. Go ahead and add that to the, uh, the screenshot there. Usually I send that coupon out to uh, already existing customers, but y'all have been so nice today. You can use that uh, coupon code WELCOME. That'll save you 10%. Now we're hey, hey. Tungsten steel is cheaper and better product and quality. Yeah, but they don't make a lot of currency out of tungsten steel. And steel is actually really tricky to work with. The last steel coin I tried to work on, I didn't even finish it. It got so hard and so tough to work on and it went kind of sideways on me. So I haven't messed with steel too much since this one. Uh, mostly I work with copper, 90% silver, fine silver, and uh, gold. But I have been dabbling a little bit in sterling silver. This is the first sterling silver coin ring I made. Came out really cool. A little eagle on the inside there. Should be adding those pretty soon. If you guys have not got a ring from him, you need to get one. Yeah, for sure. Totally. So now we got this the right size. We got it the right shape. 
just needs a little cleanup. Got the ring from you as last week. Someone ran over it. Oh damn. Does the Warman the, the Morgan scratch easily from daily use? Not as much as like a fine silver ring would. Fine silver is a little softer. Um, I'm actually really impressed with how well Morgan silver dollars, um, like how strong they are. As far as keeping their detail, like most of these coins are over a hundred years old and the detail is still super crisp. So this has been in circulation for 101 years and it's barely got a scratch or a nick on it. They're actually pretty tough. Uh, they're hard to work on, honestly. You gotta use some elbow grease to get them done. So I, I would say if you're worried about scratching, uh, I would recommend 90% silver over fine silver. I can do custom orders. Uh, I usually do them through email. Uh, if you would like to email me, you can do it. Uh, my email is info at coinringmaker.com or you can just message me on any one of my TikTok videos and say, hey, I'd like to do a custom order and I can get back to you that way as well. Yeah, I think the Morgans are pretty cool. They're one of my favorite ones to work on. Yeah, no problem. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, feel free to ask. So I don't start with like the nicest, like top of the line stuff, but I do try and find stuff that has a little more detail to it. So this one you can see is kind of uh, weathered. So that, that one probably wouldn't go up for sale, but this one you see you've got a lot more hair detail. Uh, the back is rather complete. This one's much smoother. So this is the kind of coin I look for right here. Not good enough to be graded, but still really nice detail on it. Yeah, these are great. Great looking coin. And as far as like the fine silver uh, coins, those are all brand new. So these are all going to be directly from the mint and they're going to be super crisp and clean and not scratched or any kind of wear and tear on them. They're gonna be perfect. All right, so we got the Washington one out of the way. Now we're gonna do uh, 1994. See if I can find where I put it. I may have to grab another one. There we go, 1994. I can go ahead and punch a hole in this one. We got 3,000 likes on the board. Thank you guys for tapping the screen. I do appreciate it. If you haven't visited the website yet, I'd kindly ask you to go check it out. It's coinringmaker.com. The link is on my profile, and you can use the coupon code WELCOME to save 10%. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hey, we got a blacksmith in the house very nice well welcome to my live i hope you enjoy it this one's going to be a little bit bigger than the last one we did this one's going to be a size 11. Punched quarter. Hello from the Texas oil fields. That's my backyard, buddy. Have I ever done a Punisher ring? I have to be really careful with copyright and trademarks. So I don't really do any like uh, comic booky, uh, cartoony stuff. Uh, anything that's easily recognized, like Game of Thrones and stuff like that, I just don't touch it. So I don't want to have any legal problems. Uh, as far as like uh, currency or other silver rounds, I do have quite a few to pick from, but I don't have anything that um, has has like a, a well-developed uh, trademark or copyright. 
it's pretty cool, man. Uh, if you'd like to get into it, I do have tutorials on YouTube. My YouTube channel is just called Coin Ring Maker, which I recently just broke a million views on. So if you guys want to go give me a subscription, go subscribe to me on YouTube. There's a little YouTube button on my profile. You can tap this and then go to my profile, and then there's a little YouTube button. Tap on that. Give me a subscribe. Give me a follow. And uh, I've got a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of content on there if you want to learn how to do this. I also have a recommended tool list on my website, coinringmaker.com. I know when I started, it was a little tricky to figure out what tools you need to do this. So if that's something you'd like to look into, it's on the website as well. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. It took me like three and a half years. <laughs> I never thought I'd have a, a channel with a million views on YouTube, but uh, surprise, surprise. You stick with something long enough, uh, it just might work out. It's pretty cool. Uh, I haven't worked with diamonds. I've started a little bit of work with these uh, like cubit zirconia stones, but I haven't offered any yet. I still need to do some practice, but these are some examples of the stone setting I've done so far. I need to work on my depth. They're a little too deep. A little more practice on that. I don't seal them with anything because I, I'm worried that somebody might be allergic to the seal that I do decide to use, and most of the... Uh, the seal compounds that people do use often just rub off with time. I do recommend using clear fingernail polish just because it's easy to find, it's cheap, and it works pretty well. I don't take donations. Um, all my orders are handled through my website, coinringmaker.com, which is linked on my profile right here. Whoa. That thing went flying. Come here. No, epoxy doesn't work very well either. It's it's because it's not very comfortable. Um, I've I've tried a bunch of different stuff. Uh, price ranges you can see all my prices <clears throat> on my website. Copper clad quarters start at twenty dollars. Uh, Ninety percent silver quarters are a hundred. Uh, Ninety percent silver half dollars are one hundred and fifty. Morgan dollars like this one are 200 and one ounce fine silver rounds are 300. And I've got a couple other things that, that I make uh, that are different prices. You can see all my prices on my website. You could use tongue oil, which would rub off, but would provide protection from water. Yeah, I honestly, I, I prefer to just leave them natural and leave that up to the customer with what they want to do as far as coating it. Like I said, I suggest uh, clear fingernail polish just because it's easy to find, it's rather cheap, and it, it actually works pretty well. But it does need to be reapplied over time. Yeah, quite a few of my rings say In God We Trust on them. So, for example, this Susan B. Anthony one. Has it pretty prominently right there. You get all of In God We Trust. And on this one, it is a little cut off. You get In God Trust. So the we does get cut off on these quarters. Thank you. Uh, would you change to a darker color? I prefer to have my rings as shiny as possible. I have done some antiquing in the past. I, I would do it again if you asked really nice, but I prefer to make my stuff as shiny as possible. Yeah, I try and keep as much detail on the coin as I can.
You got a nice fold going on there, nice little cone shape. Now we're going to sand our cut edge. You can really see the stretching and kind of scratching on there. We want to smooth that out before we start stretching it. Uh, swage, swage. I'm not sure what that is, bro. <laughs> I don't, I've never seen that word in my life. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. How you doing, Mr. Free Water? Y'all growing like crazy, man. I love to see it. Oh, no, that's a, um, I call that a reduction dye. How many have split on me? I actually have a whole drawer of them. Every time I mess up, I keep it so I can remember not to do it again. So we've got we've got a whole lot of examples here of split coins. I used to do it a lot more. I've gotten I've gotten better at at not ruining stuff. Yeah, I've got quite a few uh, one ounce silver rounds I can show you. So this is an American Silver Eagle. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Don't Tread on Me. And you can see more of these uh, on my website. I've got pretty decent product photos. The lighting here is a little tricky to see all these details. But there's, there's quite a few of these to pick from. No, usually it's because I haven't um, paid enough attention to this cut edge. So you can see there's little dings and scratches in it. If I don't smooth this out enough, uh, there's already scratches, and when I start stretching it, it just it splits along the line of that scratch. So this right here is a very important step. Also, annealing, so heating them up to soften the metal is, is a good way to prevent it from splitting. Uh, with copper clad quarters, I usually don't have to do it unless it's uh, a really big size, size 13, something like that. So with this one, it's going to be a size 11. I can probably get away without uh, heating it up. Back over here to our ring stretcher. This phone is so fancy, but it cannot focus when I want it to. It's it's kind of a little annoying. I mean, we got 4,200 likes on this live. Thank you guys for tapping the screen. Now we're going to get this down to our correct size. And shape it up a little bit. Very close. There we go. Right at 
size 11. Perfect. How's it going, Mr. Giant Toddler? Found yourself any silver lately? How about some W's? If you guys like quarters, you should give this guy a follow. He's hunting quarters all day long. Taught me an awful lot about quarters. Probably the fastest quarter searcher I've ever seen. He goes real quick. Found two W's last night, man. That's what's up. So with some of these older quarters, I like to use a really fine steel wool to just kind of knock some of that age off them. Helps bring the shine back. Gets rid of any kind of oxidation. And then I'll follow it up with a little polish. I'm almost done. We'll get our little polishing cloth here. get it nice and shiny inside of these is always a little tricky to get to there we go there's our 1994 quarter coin ring size 11 and our Wisconsin quarter coin ring size 10 order complete Thank you guys for watching, and uh, if you guys got some free time, go check out the website, coinringmaker.com. Take a screenshot of this. It'll give you a coupon code, save you 10%. That coupon code is welcome. And there's my website. Y'all screenshot that real quick. Go visit later today. This live is finished. I do appreciate y'all coming in and spending a little time with me. And if you'd like to see my next live, hit that follow button. I'm going to leave this up here for just, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds so y'all can get a screenshot of it. And I hope y'all have a great day. If uh, anybody has a question real quick before I leave, go ahead and throw it in the chat. If not, thanks again for joining me. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. We'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.